welcome viewers welcome to the new lesson from dr arts biology if you did not subscribe the channel you can just click on the subscribe button and bell icon welcome students so in this lesson we are just moving into the second type of nutrition that is nothing but the heterotrophic nutrition and we know the definition of heterotrophic nutrition as if an organism is procuring food from other than cells it will be known as the heterotrophy so if an organism depends on other organism for obtaining their food is known as the heterotrophic organism and the mechanism of nutrition is known as the heterotrophy so let us see that the heterotrophic organism will be deriving nutrients from other than self it can be a living organism or it can be a dead organism or it can be any products from the living organisms okay if an organism is depending on any of these three for obtaining their food or energy requirement it will be known as a heterotrophic organism how an organism can be depending on a living organism we can see that uh, we are eating the living plants or otherwise we can see that the parasitic mosquito is depending on live us okay in this way the living organisms are finding as a resource for the heterotrophic organism now let us see the dead matter you can find in case of the earthworm dead and decaying matter is actually forming this particular resource for the food in case of the saprophytic organism it's forming like that now the products what is mean by the product you can find a symbiotic association between cow bug and uh, the brown ant not only that between acacia and the red ant so many association mutualistic association you can find where the cow bug will be secreting a nectar like substance honey dew and that form the food resource for the ant okay the brown ant and from in return brown ant will be just giving the protection to the cow bug okay so that kind of products from the living organism will be forming the food for the other organism which are heterotrophic in nature so that's how the living dead and products of these organisms are forming the food resource for the heterotrophic organisms okay now we can classify heterotrophic organism based on two kind so first one is based on the source of nitrogen from where the nitrogen is obtained by this particular heterotrophic organism we can see that in case of the autotrophic organisms this nitrogen is obtained either from nitrate nitrate and then ammonia etc etc okay so that form the nitrogen resource for the autotrophic organism in case of the heterotrophic organism what is the basis of nitrogen source of nitrogen so based on that we can just classify the heterotrophic organism into two mesotrophy and metatrophy mesotrophy is a kind of heterotrophy where the heterotrophic organism depends on single type of amino acid to obtain the nitrogen so only single type of amino acid will be there and depend on that particular amino acid it will be deriving the nitrogen so you can see that in case of some protist so mesotrophy is an example for the heterotrophic organism where the nitrogen source is nothing but a single type of amino acid example is the protist now second thing is a metatrophy metatrophy you can see a wide range of amino acid which are acting as a resource for nitrogen which are acting as a source of nitrogen in heterotrophic organisms so that wide range of amino acid is there it will be known as a metatrophy okay so the nitrogen resource is a wide range of amino acid more than one type of amino acids will be there so that you can see in case of the higher animals okay so that's about the mesotrophy and metatrophy the classification of heterotrophy based on the source of nitrogen for this particular organisms now based on the nature of food what kind of food they are obtaining in which way they are obtaining their food 
we can just classify the heterotrophic organisms or heterotrophy mechanism into these kinds. In this first one is a mutualism. We know that mutualism is actually positive positive because both individual which are in association will be benefited. And that kind of association is known as the mutualism or symbiosis. Okay, so if both organism in association is getting benefited due to that particular association, it will be known as the mutualism or symbiosis. Okay, so in case of the mutualism, we can just classify it into obligatory and facultative mutualism. So we'll be just making a mutualism lesson separately in detail. Okay, so that also you have to watch. I'm just making the classification of a draw trophy based on the resource of food. Okay, so the specialized topic mutualism will be discussed later in different lesson. So that you have that also you have to watch. So obligatory mutualism is the facultative mutualism is the obligatory mutualism means the organism cannot live without association, without symbiosis, without a mutualism. That kind of mutualistic association is known as the obligatory. It's a must thing. If it is not there, the organism cannot live. And uh, examples are the termites and the trichonympha. Okay, where the trichonympha can live only if it is inside termite in mutualistic association. And we know that termites got help from trichonympha in the digestion process and absorption of the cellulose digestion. Okay, and facultative means it's not must. Without a mutualism, without symbiosis, also the both organisms in association can live. It is the mutualism, the association is not a must thing. And such kind of mutualism is known as a facultative mutualism. So you can find in case of the birds and mammals. Okay, the foraging mammals. The birds will be the where birds will be just uh, picking the the, uh, the mites and bugs from the body of mammals where birds are getting food and uh, how the mammals are getting benefit uh, they are just avoiding their parasites so both are in mutualistic or symbiotic association it's not a must thing without bird mammals can live without mammal birds can live no problem okay so that kind of mutualistic association is known as the facultative mutualism now, you can see the second type of heterotrophy, the parasitism. In case of the parasitism, we can find a relation which is actually positive and negative. The positive and negative means the one organism will get benefited and the other organism will get harm. That kind of association is known as the parasitism. We can see that the parasites will be depending on other organism and will obtain food and nutrients from the other organism which are known as the host organism and the parasite will not be killing the host organism. So we can see that the, the parasitism is a kind of association where the organisms called the parasites are obtaining their food or nutrients from other organisms called host without killing it. That kind of association is known as a parasitic association and the organism which utilizes parasitism is known as the parasite and the organism which is utilized by the parasite is known as the host. In that case also we can see the obligatory and the facultative parasitism and temporary and permanent parasitism. Obligatory as I told you, without, it, without that you cannot live, the parasite cannot live. Facultative means the parasite will be depending on host. If host is not available, it can go for the free living mode of life. Temporary means it is not completely attached to the organism host always. Instead, it will be coming and going. Just like uh, in case of the mosquito, it's a kind of parasite. There will be temporary parasite. And you can find the permanent parasite. It will be always found associating. Just like hair lice. We can see it's always found inside the lice. It's not coming, visiting and going. Instead it is there. As a parasite, ectoparasite. So that kind of parasitism is there. Now we can see that the third type is nothing but the 
saprotrophy. Saprotrophy is not an association. Normally, the saprophytic digestion, saprophytic mode of nutrition is the one which is utilized or which is defined in the wrong way, always. Just think about the definition of saprophytic nutrition in your mind. Then compare with the definition that I am saying now. Okay, so just think, before I am saying, just pause the video and just think about what is meant by the saprophytic nutrition. Then you can just match it with the, the definition that I am saying. Saprophytic nutrition is a nutrition where the digestion takes place outside and the nutrients which are formed from digestion will be absorbed into the body. Okay, so the food is not taken in. Instead, the food is digested outside the body and the nutrients only are absorbed. That kind of nutrition is known as the saprophytic nutrition. But what we have learned, the definition of saprophytic nutrition, we have learned it like this. Saprophytic nutrition is a nutrition where the organism is depending on dead and decaying matter. So that kind of nutrition is called the tritivorous nutrition. Okay, so most of the saprophyte will be detritivorous. Why? The outside digestion will be easier if it is dead and decaying matter. But not always. There are saprophytic organisms which are predatory in nature also. Just take the case of spider. They are predatory in nature. They can just run behind the cockroach and will catch it and will inject the venom and will paralyze it. And after that, they will be injecting digestive enzymes into cockroach. And the internal organs will be digested outside. And the spider will be just sucking that particular juice. The nutrient soup will be just sucked. So digestion is taking place outside. It's a kind of saprophytic nutrition. Okay. So clearly, you have to Make sure that you know what is actually mean by the saprophytic mode of nutrition and what is actually the tritivorous mode of nutrition. Okay, the tritivorous is also the, the, we can say that saprophytic mode of nutrition can also be like the tritivorous, it's not always. So saprophytic mode of nutrition is a nutrition where digestion takes place outside the body of an organism and nutrients is absorbed. Okay, so make sure you are knowing that particular definition. And as the digestion will be easier, if it is the dead decaying matter, most of the saprophytic organisms will be detritivorous in nature, which depends on the dead decaying matter. So you can define saprophytes like that, don't get confused and you have to make sure that you are now onwards, you are just following this definition. Okay, saprophyte and detritivorous are two entire things, but it can be related. Okay, so saprophytic mode of nutrition, you can find the outside digestion takes place mainly, they will be depending on the dead and decay matter, it's not always. Now, osmotrophy is the, what do you mean by osmotrophy? Osmotrophy, you can find it in case of most of the endoparasites, where the digestive system is completely absent. You can find osmotrophy. Osmotrophy is nothing but the nutrients will be absorbed through the body surface of organisms. Azan was there, that's why I took a break. So we were discussing about osmotrophy. Osmotrophy is nothing but work. The organism is lacking the digestive system. And as a result, we can see that uh, in case of the most of the endoparasites, like uh, Trypanosoma, Tinea, etc., where the nutrients will be absorbed from the outside medium directly through the body surface, not through the mouth. From the body surface, it will be absorbed. It's a kind of osmotic thing. Okay, we can see like that. And that kind of nutrition is known as the osmotrophy. So, osmotrophy is a nutrition where nutrients are absorbed through the body surface of an organism. And it happens mostly in case of the endoparasites where digestive system is absent. And you can find example, trypanosoma and tinea. Now, the last one is a holotrophy. <laughs> holotrophy. So, what is mean by holotrophy? Holotrophy, if you are just taking the solid food or liquid food in large amount, large size, 
into your mouth and digestion is taking place inside your body. So if digestion takes place inside your body by taking the large food material in the form of solid or liquid matter, it will be and digestion is taking place inside the body it will be known as the holotrophic nutrition. So holotrophy is that. So it's exactly opposite to the saprophyte or saprotrophy. Saprotrophy were digestion outside and holotrophy were food is taken in and the digestion will be taking place inside. And that kind of nutrition is known as the holotrophy. Okay, so in case of the holotrophy, we can see six different steps. What are they? You can find it. First one is nothing but. So the finding of food. And then ingestion. You are taking food into your body. And then what will happen? Ige sorry, digestion will be taking place. Digestion take place. And after that, what will happen? After that, absorption will be taking place. And then fifth one, using the absorbed nutrients, Energy will be synthesized, energy will be released. So we can say that assimilation, utilizing the absorbed nutrients, that is known as the assimilation. And what will happen to the food that is not being digested and absorbed? It will be forming the waste matter and the waste should be rejected out. And that process is known as the ejection. So, six one is the ingestion. So, this six step process is there in case of the holotrophy that you keep in mind. We can see that uh, based on the type of food that you are eating, the organism is eating, we can have uh, three different types of holotrophy. So, it's nothing but the herbivory where we can find the, the plant material is taken as a food. And you are familiar with that carnivore. I am not going into detail of that. Carnivore were the animal matter is taken as food and the omnivory when the organism prefer both the plant and animal alike and it will be known as the omnivory and in this we can find herbivory there are different types of herbivory based on which type of plant matter you are utilizing the organism is utilizing if you are if the organism is you, you are eating fruits it will be known as the frugivory Okay, and if the organism is utilizing grains, it will be known as the granivory. If the organism is utilizing grass, it will be known as the graminivory. So it will be going on like that. These are some examples of herbivory were what type of plant material is consumed by the organism and how we can classify that kind of nutrition, holotrophy or herbivory. Okay, in case of the carnivore, again we can have the similar kind of classification based on what type of animal you are, the organism is utilizing. So we can see that uh, insectivory is there. What is mean by insectivory? If the organism is eating the insects, then it will be insectivory. We can say that anteater, echidna. So those kinds of organisms will be under insectivory even though it is carnivory. And uh, we can find a sanguivory. What is mean by sanguivory? Blood feeding organisms. We can find bat, umbrella bats are there. And we can find mosquitoes that's also sanguivory. We can find leech that's also sanguivory. Okay, so if the organism depends on the blood of animal, it will be known as the sanguivory. And there is myrmacophagy. Myrmacophagy means if you are, if the organism eat eating ant, it will be specially known as the myrmacophagy. Just like the example that I have repeated there in the insectivory. You know that ant is also an insect. Within the insectivory, you can find a myrmacophagy if the organism is specialized for eating ant as the food. That is what we mean by the myrmacophagy. The their insect will be insectivory. So myrmacophobia can come under insectivory which can come under carnivory. 
Okay, so that are the different types of classification of these things based on the type of food that they are eating. Now, omnivory will be coming under both. So, if that preference is there, if both the animals and the plants are preferred. Now, in case of the holotrophy, we can have another two type which is not uh, coming under this particular category. That are nothing but the detritivory that I have explained in case of the saprophytic mode of life. In case of saprophyte, what we have learned, digestion outside. And mostly it will be the dendicary. What is actually detritivory? Detritivory is coming on top of both holotrophy and saprotrophy. Why? Because if an organism is depending on that then decaying matter, it will be known as the detritivory. If the dead and decaying matter digestion takes place outside the body and nutrients are absorbed, it will be saprophytic or saprotrophy. If the dead and decaying matter is taken inside the body and digested and absorbed the, the nutrients, it will be known as the holotrophy. So detritivory can be holotrophic or saprophytic. Okay, so keep in mind, so detritivory, if an organism depends on the dead and decaying matter, it will be known as the detritivory. Just take the case of fungus and earthworm. In case of fungus, it is saprophytic, even though it is detritivorous. In case of earthworm, it is that it is actually holotrophic, even though it is detritivorous in nature because it will be consuming the dead and decaying matter. And you are familiar with the vermiculture and all in the previous semester. So detritivory and caprophagy is the no, that's why you worry. Now, second type is the coprophobi. I will be just making another lesson for the coprophobi. Coprophobi is nothing but the feeding on fecus. The fecal matter is again taken in. Okay, and uh, it is actually enhancing the digestion process. It is actually helping the digestion of cellulose especially. And it is actually helping the maximum absorption of nutrients. It is helping in vitamin K, vitamin K and biotin absorption synthesis. So that kind of mechanism is known as a coprophagy or prophagy. And the coprophagy I will be just explaining with another lesson. So it's simply you can just say that even organism feeds its own fecal matter. Okay, that is passing through the digestive system one time. Then it will be known as the coprophagy. Okay, we will be discussing having a separate lesson that also you have to watch. So that's about a heterotrophic mode of nutrition. Okay. So what are the upcoming lessons? So mutualism will be the when coprophagy will be the under the heterotrophy. After that you will be having ruminants, digestion through the ruminant the gut. Okay. So that also will be the and uh, by covering that particular portion, the half of the unit one will be covered and the remaining will be about digestion of carbohydrate, protein, lipid and its absorption. So that also we will be discussing. So just make sure that you are preparing the notes with the uh, screenshot that I will be just showing after this video and uh, hope you are learning concept step by step and you are not leaving the entire thing just for just before the examination, for just before the examination. So you have, make sure that your step by step you are learning and one by one you are adding to your brain and so that uh, it will not be difficult for you to secure good mark during examination without any confusion. Okay, so thank you for watching and let's move to the next lesson.